Hi, in this lesson we're going to be talking about hard disk partitions and how they are used and what they are for. So the way they work is going to vary depending on uh, the boot process you're using, if you're using MBR or GPT, and then also for Windows users if you're using basic or dynamic disks, that's going to make a difference as well. All right, so first let's talk a little bit about hard disk partitions. So hard disk partitioning is the process of dividing a physical disk on the drive into separate logical sections known as partitions. Each partition acts as an independent storage unit, appearing to the operating system as a distinct disk with its file system. So you could have a E, F, G, H drive that could all be separate partitions. So even though they're on the same physical hard drive, uh, Windows thinks of them as separate actual drives themselves. Okay, so here's why partitioning is useful to organize your data, uh, improve performance. So smaller partitions can potentially access files faster than a single large partition. Uh, increase security if you want to isolate files on different drives. Uh, simplify your backups. You know, if you're using a backup based on drive letters, you could back up just your G drive, which has, you know, certain data on it compared to your H drive, which might have other data on it that you don't need backed up. Uh, if you're going to do dual booting, let's say you're going to boot two versions of Windows or maybe Linux and Windows, uh, you could use partitions to have uh, each OS on their own separate drive. Okay, so when we're talking about MBR partitions, there's two main types. So you have your primary partitions, so you could have up to four primary partitions, and then each primary partition can be further subdivided into logical partitions. And then you could have extended partitions as well. So if you need more than these four partitions, you could create an extended partition within a primary partition. And then that extended partition can then be divided into logical partitions. So it goes primary, extended, logical. So we'll show you an example of that once we uh, get into the uh, demonstration here. Okay, things to consider when partitioning. Uh, how much space you're going to need, uh, the number of partitions you want to use, and the file system. Uh, if you're using Windows, you're most likely just going to do all NTFS unless you have a reason not to. Okay, so here's a chart kind of showing the difference between MBR and GPT partitioning, such as the addressing, you know, two terabyte partitions. Uh, I think it was up to nine exabytes, I believe, on this one for GPT. So four primary partitions on MBR and 128 on GPT. So you'll have extended and logical partitions in addition to your primary partitions on MBR. And then you only have primary partitions on GPT. Then uh, the boot process, BIOS compared to UEFI. So we have some data integrity. And then MBR and GPT are probably going to be you know, compatible with pretty much anything you're going to be using Windows-wise. And then, of course, you have your backup partition table when you're using GPT, which you don't for MBR. And then, of course, most modern computers are going to be using GPT with a, a UEFI. Okay, so basic versus dynamic disk. So once you have your MBR or GPT selection made, when you create your disks, then you could further designate them as basic or dynamic disks, depending on your needs. Okay, so basic disk uh, uses partition to divide the disk space. And then once again, you could have four primary partitions or three primaries and an extended with logical drives. And then the dynamic disk employs volumes instead of partitions. So you'll see that in the demonstration. So these volumes can be dynamically extended or shrunk or moved within the disk. And of course, you want to be careful when extending or reducing your volumes uh, because you always want to back up your data before doing so because you don't want to risk any data loss. All right, some advanced features. Okay, so for the basic disk, limited to basic disk utilities like formatting and assigning drive letters. And then with the dynamic disk, you have all the other fancy options such as disk spanning. So if you want to combine free space from multiple disks into a single volume for performance gains, uh, mirrors for backups. So that's when you have two drives and when you write to one, it writes to the other automatically. So then if one drive crashes, the other one will take over and you'll still be able to carry on. And then you could just rebuild your mirror with a new drive and then uh, start the uh, copy process again. Okay, and then you have striping, not stripping, by the way. <laughs> I'll leave that in there just for fun. Um, it divides data across multiple disks for improved performance, known as RAID 0. Of course, there's all different kinds of uh, RAID versions you could use for different types of redundancy and performance gains. Okay, so conversion. So you could convert a basic disk to a dynamic disk in Windows but the process is irreversible and requires backing up your data first if you want to go back. 
and converting a dynamic disk back to a basic disk involves deleting all the volumes on the disk and starting over. Okay, so now let's go into Windows and kind of show you some examples of how this works. Okay, so now on this computer here, we have these two physical disks that are already in use. One has Windows, and you can see it has three partitions in it. The main one that has our data, and then Windows makes its own EFI system partition and a recovery partition on its own when you install Windows. And then we have this backup drive, 120 gigs, which is all one drive and all one partition or volume in use. And if we right click on it, you can see that we, ex we could extend or shrink it. We can't extend it because we don't have anywhere to extend it, but we could shrink it down if we wanted to. Uh, we could change the drive letters and pass if we want to give it a different letter besides E. And of course, well, we could delete it, which will delete everything on it. And then you can check the properties of it as well, which is the same as right clicking it in File Explorer. Okay, so now we have these two new disks here. They're just some small test ones, a 10 gig and a 15 gig. So they are not initialized, so they're just listed as unknown. So if we right click on one and choose initialize, it says you want to initialize both of them, but we'll say just the one for now, disk two, because we're going to make this an MBR disk, master boot record. Okay, so it says online and it automatically makes it a basic disk. And for this one, we're going to make it GPT. Okay, so now we have our two basic disks with uh, no volumes on there. Okay, so watch what happens when I make partitions on the MBR disk. So I'm just going to right click new simple volume. Notice it's called a volume, not a partition, but it's still a partition. I'm just going to make it 10 megabytes just so I could have multiple partitions on here. And whatever, whatever drive letter it assigns, we'll just pick it and give it a quick format. Okay, same with this one. We'll do it again. Okay. And one more time for the third one. Okay, so now we have three primary partitions here. You can see it says primary partition, even though it says volume right there. So now watch what happens on the fourth one here. Now you can see it made an extended volume here with logical drive with some free space here. So we have our three primaries and our one extended with a logical drive. We still have free space. And if I do it again, now we have another logical drive when I could just keep going and going until we don't have any free space left. Okay, so now let's do the same thing on the GPT disk. Okay, so we have our new volume here. Let's do a couple more times here, or a few more times. Okay, so here goes the fourth one, so watch what happens here. You could say it's a new volume again, so it's not making the extended partition with the logical drive in there. And then we could keep going once again up to 128 or until we run out of space here. And so on. Okay, so now let's see what happens on a basic disk. If we right click here, and let's say we're going to do a new mirrored volume, which was using RAID again. So we're going to use this disk 3 for our mirror, which is also a basic disk. Just pick a letter here. It looks like everything's going to work. Watch what happens when we click on Finish. The operation you selected will convert the selected basic disk to dynamic disks. And then it's another message here about if you convert the disk to dynamic, you will not be able to start installed operating systems from any volume on the disk except the current volume and so on. So it'll actually convert them to dynamic disks in order to use the mirrored function. So we're going to say no to that. So now I'm going to convert this to a dynamic disk by right-clicking on it, convert to dynamic disk. Make sure we pick the right number here, disk 3. Convert. Gives you the same message here. Now you can see it's a dynamic disk and our volumes actually change color here. Now if I right-click, let's say new striped volume, 
We'll add this disk two, which is the basic disk. Now, once again, it's going to want to convert disk two to a dynamic disk to do so. And then if we say yes, now you can see that's dynamic. And now our volumes change from the logical to just the regular volumes here. And now you can see it's creating that new striped volume for us. Okay, so hopefully that's not too confusing. Uh, just remember when you initialize your disk, pick MBR or GPT, most likely GPT, uh, depending on how you want to make your partitions or volumes. You know, just remember with the GPT, you could have the 128 uh, partitions there or volumes. Whereas with the MBR, you could have the three primaries, one extended with the multiple logicals, and then basic disks, you can only just create partitions and give them drive letters, or dynamic disks, you could do the stuff like the spanning and the striping and the mirroring and that type of thing. All right, thanks for watching.